so what's up guys welcome to my channel so this video is going to be my labor and delivery story i have been dying to make this video um for a few weeks now but i'm kind of speaking really low right now because everyone is asleep and i don't want to wake anybody up especially the baby <laughs> this video is going to be my labor and delivery story um y'all i'm literally like can't believe that i'm a mom now like this is crazy and i'm finally like getting the time to just you know sit down and just think about everything and recall exactly how everything happened um leading up to me going into labor and like delivery and everything because i mean it was a lot especially since this was my first time and then i gave birth like you know doing this whole coronavirus pandemic thing so yeah it was definitely a lot for me but at the same time i have just been like super excited and happy and just grateful that my beautiful baby made it here safe and sound i'm just happy that we were both very healthy because honestly y'all i had a very stressful pregnancy um not health wise like i was healthy throughout my entire pregnancy my baby was healthy but you know i just had a lot of like I just had a lot of other issues going on that really stressed me out so throughout my whole pregnancy i always thought that something bad was going to happen i thought that i was going to have um a premature baby or that like and, you know i just thought all these crazy things because i was just so stressed out with life throughout my pregnancy but yeah everything turned out fine i'm pretty sure like not the only mom who's stressed over like any and everything throughout her pregnancy so yeah i ended up having a lot going on in my life throughout my entire pregnancy um, but I carried pretty much full term. I ended up going into labor exactly at 38 weeks. Like literally on the day I made 38 weeks is the day I went into labor. And I had actually planned to vlog my entire like labor and delivery experience, but I went into labor very like unexpectedly. I was not expecting it at all. The days leading up to it, I didn't feel like I was about to go into labor like I didn't feel like the baby was about to come yet like the only thing I noticed was like I would have slight cramps like the slightest of all cramps literally um, it would feel like period cramps but like much lighter like very just very light period cramps basically I would notice that but it would only be for a few minutes a day so I would just be like oh yeah those are just Braxton Hickson's contractions and just not pay much attention to it and then on the morning when I went into labor like I literally remember this like it was yesterday I mean well my baby is only seven weeks old um so it really wasn't that long ago but still i remember it like literally so vividly um so yeah i gave birth on april 4th 2020 and that was a saturday that friday night before i went to bed you know i had all these plans for that saturday i was going to film a youtube video i was going to finish packing my hospital bag oh and by the way um, I'm actually going to upload what I packed in my hospital bag video. I'm going to upload that video pretty soon. Even though I never really got to finish packing my hospital bag, I'm still going to upload what I ended up taking to the hospital with me. Um, so yeah, I had all these plans for that Saturday. And then I woke up that Saturday with wet panties. First of all, I understand that I'm pregnant. I know that. And... Like my panties were wet and I'm just like dang did I really at my big old age did I really just wet the bed like during the time I wasn't thinking much of it but as I was sleeping that Friday night I remember waking up and I had slight cramps in my stomach but I was just like so sleepy to the point where I didn't care so I just went back to sleep and then that Saturday morning, I'm just sitting on the toilet telling myself, like, I know I didn't pee on myself. Like, I just, I know me. I know, I just knew that I didn't pee on myself. Um, so I come back out of the bathroom with my little panties in my hand. And I'm just, like, telling baby daddy. He hates when I call him baby daddy, but it's funny to me. I'm showing him, like, 
look at this, like I did not pee on myself. And I'm holding my panties thinking, oh my God, my water broke. And he wasn't saying anything, so I'm just like, okay, I mean, I guess maybe I did pee on myself because it wasn't that much. And then the bed wasn't wet, you know, it was just literally just my panties that was wet. And I'm like, okay, I mean, when I went to the bathroom, I did pee a lot, so maybe, you know, a little pee trickled out throughout my sleep. So he was like, yeah, whatever, get back in the bed. So. You know, I put new underwear on and I get back in the bed. I just feel something running out of me. So I get back up and my panties were wet again, literally. And I'm just like, what is going on? And then baby daddy is over there talking about, oh, that's just a part of pregnancy. And I'm like, oh no, I think my water is breaking. But then I'm thinking to myself, like, I know, like if this was my water breaking, it would be more fluid than this. So I'm just like, am I really sitting here peeing for myself? Like, literally. I literally changed underwear again and got back in the bed again. Um, and then when I got back in the bed that time, baby daddy was like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go get some breakfast. So he like literally left and went to Chick-fil-A. As soon as he left, like, I felt it happening again. So I get up out of the bed and I like walk toward the bathroom and like right before I open the bathroom door, everything just like gushes out of me, like literally like a waterfall, just like all coming out on the floor. And the crazy thing about it is that in that moment, I was just so happy that I got out of bed. I was literally thinking to myself, like I'm happy I got out of the bed because you know, the bed would have been soaked. But then I was just like, oh my God, this has to be my water breaking. Like, literally has to be my water breaking. I was home alone, you know, baby daddy was going to Chick-fil-A. So I get my phone and I call my sister because my sister has a baby. She's been through this before. So I'm just like, okay, she can give me some insight. So I call my sister and I'm like, oh my God, I think my water just broke. And then I showed her everything on the floor. And she was like, yeah, your water is just definitely broke. You should go to the hospital. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm about to go to the hospital. I hang up with her. Then I call my best friend. And I'm like, yeah, girl, my water just broke. I'm about to go to the hospital. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, let me know what's ha what happened. Um, and then I called my mom. She didn't answer. I think I called her like twice and she didn't answer. Then she ended up calling me back. Um, and then I called baby daddy and I'm like, yeah, um, I talked to my sister. This is definitely my water. I think I'm going to call like the hospital. I don't want to just show up and they tell me like, go home. Um, he was like, okay, I'm on my way home. And then I called the hospital and they were like, well, if you think that your water broke, you need to get in here ASAP. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm on my way. And mind you, like, I wasn't in pain or anything at all. Like, I didn't feel any cramps. Like, I wasn't in pain at all. This literally all happened at 8 o'clock in the morning. And at this time, y'all, it still did not register in my mind that I was about to have a baby. Like, you know, I thought that I was going to go to the hospital and they were going to send me home because it wasn't time. Like, I didn't think, you know, I was about to have a baby. So, yeah, um... After they told me to come into the hospital, it literally took me two hours to get dressed to go to the hospital. Like, the hospital that I gave birth at is not even 10 minutes away from where I live. Um, they told me to come at 8. I didn't make it there until like almost like 10.30ish. By the time that baby daddy made it back home, it was well established that it was my water that had broke because after the big waterfall, like it didn't stop like fluids kept leaking out of me and unfortunately for me i didn't have any like pads all i had was tampons and i didn't want to keep and i didn't want to stick any tampons up in there you know so well before i gave birth i hadn't worn pads in like five years like all i wore was tampons so i didn't have any pads and the fluids was just like leaking out so I literally had to stick some towels in my underwear to ride to the hospital with like I didn't want my car seat to get soaked or anything so I like stuffed some towels down there then I sit on a towel in the car um literally like the whole car ride y'all I, I didn't think the baby was coming but at the same time I was just like in a weird mood 
because I was catching an attitude with baby daddy. I literally cursed him out on the way there. I don't even remember like what for. I think he like, I don't know, I think like I asked him to hand me my purse and he was like moving too slow and I just got aggravated. But yeah, I was just like not in the best of moods. Like, but yeah, once we got to the hospital, it was pretty weird because they wouldn't let us walk right in the door due to the COVID-19, they wouldn't let us walk in the door um, because I don't think we were ready. Yeah, we didn't have our mask on. Um, I didn't even have a mask at that point because I had been quarantining. I hadn't really been leaving the house, so I didn't need a mask. So they stopped us at the door and they were like, what are you guys here for? And I was like, well, um, I think I'm in labor. And they were like, oh my God, oh my God, we're sorry, come in. The lady was like asking me all kind of questions and I'm just like, I don't know, it was just like a lot was going on for me, you know, like all the questions that they've been asking everyone during this like pandemic, like, you know, they were asking me, had I been out the country or had I had a fever or a cough and like all this stuff. The process of getting in the hospital, I don't know, it just made me nervous. So yeah, they took me in, they put me in a wheelchair and gave me a mask and then they made baby daddy leave. Oh yeah, he forgot his, um id in the car so they made him leave and go get his id so yeah while he was going to get his id they pushed me on up um to the room where they checked me or whatever it was one of the rooms where like you're not the only patient like there were there was another lady in there when i got in there and then they just like closed her curtain and they put me by the next curtain and now y'all when i went to go change clothes is when i realized like this just might be happening today because um before i left home the fluid that was coming out was just basically clear like that was just basically clear to me but now the fluid was red and there was like blood and tissue in the fluid but i still wasn't feeling like any contractions or anything so i was just like i don't know it was all just so weird to me because i always thought that that happens like at the same time as contractions i put my hospital gown on and by the time i came out of the bathroom baby daddy was already there in the room like sitting in the chair or whatever on the side of the bed the on call OBGYN came in and checked me so once she checked me i don't know what she did she just like did some stuff or she stuck some stuff like you know and then she was like oh my god you're four centimeters dilated and i'm like i mean i don't really know i didn't really know like what that meant exactly but i just knew that once you get to a certain centimeters dilated that it would be time to start pushing once she said that i was four centimeters dilated i remember that back at one of my um prenatal doctor appointments my doctor had told me that i would be able to get my epidural once i was four centimeters dilated as soon as she said that i was like okay well can i have my epidural I was literally like, okay, well, can I please have my epidural? And like, mind you guys, I had not felt any pain at this moment, but I just knew that I did not want to feel any pain. So I was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do the epidural since I'm four centimeters. I mean, I'm not feeling any pain right now, but I'm pretty sure like if I'm four centimeters, it's going to come soon. Yeah, they were just like, yeah, cool, we'll give you your epidural. We're going to call your doctor to come in because my doctor wasn't like, in at the moment they had to call her in so by the time that she told me i was four centimeters dilated it was already past noon like it was already past 12 o'clock i didn't think that the baby was going to come like anytime soon like i didn't think she was going to come that day honestly um, so yeah they moved me over to the delivery room and that's where i think i took like i'm pretty sure i took like a, i recorded a few videos on my phone of me in the delivery room if there's any good footage on the videos I recorded, I will insert them somewhere in this video. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but the baby is more so on this side right now. Because this side is just a little flatter. Um, so yeah, she's like right here. So yeah, I was laying down at first, but they set me up so that she can kind of, you know, go down a little bit more like right before they moved me to the delivery room i started to feel the contractions and they were intense like i've always had pretty intense menstrual cramps like if i don't take any medicine for my menstrual cramps 
Like I cannot walk, I cannot talk, I cannot get out of bed. So I felt that I would be prepared, you know, for these contractions, but no, no, no. My contraction started, they literally started, and I started asking for my epidural like repeatedly, repeatedly, and they were just like, oh yeah, once you get in the, once you get into the delivery room, the anesthesiologist will come and give you the epidural. They rolled me on up to the delivery room, and once I got there, it was about another 45 minutes before the um, lady came to give me the epidural, and I was just like, I wasn't having it, okay? Baby daddy was there trying to calm me down, but I'm just like, no, I did not like it. I know at one point, baby daddy recorded how far apart the contractions were, but I forgot like exactly what it was. But once the lady came to give me my epidural, they asked him to leave out of the room. And so we didn't even bring my hospital bag because for some reason, we just really did not think that we were coming to stay. Like we did not think that we were coming to have this baby. So when the doctor asked him to leave the room so that I can get my epidural, he was like, I'll just go home, you know, and get your hospital bag and get everything you need and come back. I was like, okay, cool. So the whole epidural experience was something of its own like i don't know if i'll ever get another epidural again but that is definitely a story for another day um so yeah they gave me my epidural and literally after that i'm not gonna lie the rest of my labor and delivery was a breeze so by the time i was finished getting my epidural it was already 257 y'all 257 and baby daddy was still gone because he was still like going home to get my um hospital bag and everything ready so i mean after i got the epidural really i didn't feel anything they checked me again and i was six or seven centimeters dilated I think that once you get to 10 centimeters you can start pushing yeah after about an hour and 30 minutes i start to like feel the baby literally feel the baby pushing out of me it didn't hurt or anything it just felt like a bunch of pressure just like pushing down and so i asked my nurse and i was just like hey like when do i know if it's time to start pushing and she was like well do you feel something and i was like yeah i definitely feel like the baby is coming out and so the other nurse lady comes in and checks me and she was like oh yeah she's around 11 centimeters go get her doctor and i'm just like what? It's time. And all of the nurses, like, I, I kid you not, I feel like when she said that, all the nurses started to, like, scramble. Like, stuff started to happen really fast. And so I'm texting baby daddy, like, baby daddy, get here now. It's about to happen. Like, it's happening. And all the nurses were, like, doing everything they had to do. They were calling my doctor. She was on her way. And I'm just, like, laying there by myself, scared. I didn't have any other family members there with me because... Because of this pandemic, I wasn't allowed to have anyone else with me. I was only allowed to have one person and baby daddy was coming, so I couldn't have anybody else with me. By the time five o'clock came, my um, my doctor, she was already in the room. They propped me up. My legs were like up and open. They propped me up and baby daddy still wasn't there. So I was like hella pissed off because he was literally about to miss everything. So then we started pushing as they were telling me to like push it was very hard for me because i felt like i didn't feel anything like since i had the epidural i couldn't really feel how hard i was pushing so when they were saying they were like push harder push harder and i'm just like mm. i didn't really know whether or not i was pushing harder because like i literally could not tell but i could just feel the pressure of the baby like pushing down so i mean i was just i was trying but I didn't really know how well I was doing um but honestly I just thank God that I had literally the best nurses like ugh, they, they were the best nurses they really helped me through and they literally made everything 10 times easier for me I pushed for exactly 14 minutes literally for exactly 14 minutes and the second the baby was coming out 
of me. Baby daddy walked in. So like he literally caught it at the last second because like God was just like, you're not gonna miss this. Once they pulled her out and they set her on my chest, I was just like, I don't even know like, like I just, I could not believe that that was my baby. Like I created this baby. Like I was so in shock. Like I was literally speechless like, if someone would have tried to talk to me in that moment, I would not have been able to answer them. I would not have been able to utter a single word. Like, I was just so, I was so speechless, like, literally. After they laid her on my chest and they took her over to the um, scale and they weighed her, like, literally from the moment they picked her up, I stared at her. I watched the nurses every single move with her, like, I was obsessed as soon as I saw her. And as I'm like staring at the baby, um, my doctor comes and tells me, oh, you did great. You didn't tear at all. You don't need stitches and all this stuff. But I'm like, I'm not even paying attention to that because I'm just like staring at my baby. Like I just wanted my baby back. Like I just wanted her back in my arms, like literally. But I do remember like once the nurse put her in the scale to weigh her, baby daddy was over there trying to touch her and then the nurse was just like no don't touch her yet and i'm just like what is he over there doing if you see the nurse like you know doing all of this stuff why are you over there trying to touch the baby and i was just like move out the way so they can hurry up and give me my baby back and he's over there with like a huge smile on his face so once they brought her back to me i was literally just like so happy and they put her in my arms and I breastfed her like right away. I put her on this boob. I set her like right here and breastfed her and she literally latched on so perfectly. Her eyes were open so wide and I was so surprised because I generally thought that, you know, most babies have their eyes closed. So I was just expecting her to come out and just like have her eyes closed. Um, and then like once I held her, she wasn't even crying for the first few minutes and I was like, she knows that I'm her mom, like she knows who's holding her right now. Yeah, I basically fed her and did skin to skin with her for, you know, a good minute before they took her back to do other stuff. So yeah, the baby was born at 5.30 p.m. on April 4th, 2020. She was six pounds and one ounce and she was 18 inches long honestly y'all i feel like i just had a very easy labor definitely in a very easy delivery it just all went so smoothly which i was like which i'm grateful for because i was scared to not be able to have family there um but yeah it's crazy because she came two weeks early my original due date was april 18th and she came on april 4th so she came early but it's just like everything fell into place she was perfectly healthy which i am just forever grateful for because i mean i was a premature baby her dad was a premature baby and while i was about 35 weeks pregnant i got into um a minor car accident but it still like had me very shaken up i think about everything that happened you know leading up to her arrival like it's just like wow so basically I went to the hospital around 10.30 a.m. and then the baby was here by 5.30, like just that quick. And I was just like, I'm still so shocked at by how fast all of it happened. Like we stayed in the hospital for exactly 48 hours. Um, she was born that Saturday at 5.30 and we were able to leave the hospital that Monday at 5.30 because they wanted us to stay exactly 48 hours to monitor the babies. She stayed in my room with me the entire night, um, both nights. I remember one night the nurse came in my room and she was like, would you like me to take her so you can get some rest? And I was like, no, you know what, no, I'm fine. I'll keep her, it's fine. Um, I literally did not get any rest. First night I got some rest because the baby slept most of the night. But the second night, no, she was up and I was up but that was okay with me because it's just like that's what I wanted like I wanted to spend literally every second with her and honestly since I've had her I've spent every single day with her like even when I'm not around her for a few minutes like I'm just constantly thinking about her so yeah she's seven weeks old now I'll insert some pictures or some videos 
of her somewhere throughout this video. But luckily for me, I get to spend like every day with her right now. Like it's just, I love it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, make sure you get subscribed. And I will see you guys in my next video.